Yeah, okay, Peirce is extremely interesting from the, from the point of view of the history of philosophy in the sense that uh, rather than pointing to any one set of influences that, um, that you know, or one, one major influence, you have a whole confluence of influences which would seem to be not exactly um, uh, coherent, but Peirce in a sense made them coherent because who else would have tried to combine um, Duns Scotus's form of scholasticism with its scholastic realism with Scottish empiricism and with a great sense of the advances in scientific uh, method that is thinking about scientific method that uh, that the British empiricists themselves uh, had tr had tried to develop. Uh, plus, of course, we have Peirce's own autobiographical uh, comments about this, uh, namely uh, his um, reading Kant from a very early age, and also his having thrown himself on the floor and read Schiller's aesthetic letters. Uh, now, that's an incredible comment uh, to, to make, namely, here is a person who uh, says he's a critical common sensist, in that sense has, feels himself to have an affinity with the Scottish school, and then you have somebody who is really very far away from the Scottish school, who ultimately had a great effect upon Peirce, upon, I think, the sort of the inner feel of Peirce, and that is Schiller. Uh, strangely enough, there you have also, I think, a connection between Peirce and Dewey, because Dewey's uh, artist experience uh, is, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the kind of aesthetic theory uh, that Peirce would have written uh, without a lot of the later semiotic apparatus that the semiotic approaches to art uh, tried to um, you know, tried to uh, avail themselves of. Uh, what's really interesting, I think, uh, uh, about um, uh, this particular type of, of, of confluence of things in Peirce is, um, and this is something that Dewey himself also saw, and that is the, the, the role of quality. And uh, Dewey's whole, and consequently, the primacy of firstness, and as Peirce himself argued, the primacy of the aesthetic, even uh, as determinative of of the good. Uh, so uh, we have in person, looking at his background, his intellectual background, this, this uh, unbelievable welding together of philosophical influences. But I think uh, it's a mistake to only look at what Peirce read. I think it's important to see what Peirce himself uh, had experienced and did. And this becomes very clear in Peirce's great distinction between the uh, seminary mind and the laboratory mind. The cemetery, seminary mind being uh, a mind uh, filled with books. Uh, it's, it's a library mind, uh, 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 and, uh, and, and in that sense, it's a, it's a mind that is concerned with the uh, free construction of concepts, but in a very real sense, uh, without the type of empirical grounding or the pragmatic or pragmatistic grounding that Peirce himself was deeply, deeply concerned with. He says, for that, we have to turn to the laboratory mind. And the laboratory mind, I think, uh, uh, this reference grew out of the intellectual experiences of Peirce uh, being trained as a chemist and being trained as a scientist and being brought up in a family where uh, mathematics and, and uh, mathematical issues uh, of, that were uh, focused upon strict forms of proof, strict forms of clarity, uh, how to make our ideas clear. What is more, what is a more uh, powerful instrument for making our ideas clear, of course, than mathematical uh, analysis? Uh, but Peirce was not just interested in pure mathematics. He was interested in the degree to which pure mathematics or mathematics uh, was embodied in the material world, but also in the methods of proof. And uh, so I, Peirce's later in, uh, uh, reflections upon methods and upon the three forms of inference, uh, I think, were uh, truly um, uh, welded, not so much in his, in his reading, but is his, in his, uh, in his uh, experimental work and in his uh, scientific uh, work. The, the early papers of Peirce which everybody describes as early, I think are papers, the inner trajectories of which are 
continuing in, in, in his later work. The great themes that are already present there are, are present in the later work, obviously more expanded, more perhaps more technically developed, although having just um, recently attempted to teach these materials to undergraduates, uh, they certainly are technical enough. But what Peirce saw at the beginning of his philosophical work was the primacy of mediation. That is, Peirce uh, made an um, all-out attack on the notion that there is an uninterpreted world or an uninterpreted self. And his deepest insight was that our access to the world and our access to the self is through uh, uh, an inferential process where the world appears to us and we appear to ourselves as if uh, we are signs that have to be read. And that uh, these signs, though, are, are, of, of, of a diff, uh, are on multi-leveled. Uh, it's very clear that the self is given to itself as a unity of feeling. Uh, it's given to itself as a source of action. And it's also given to itself as a kind of carrier of predicates. You know, I am male, I am female, I am a scientist, I am an American, etc. Those are not natural facts, those are social facts or I am a patriot, or uh, I am an atheist, or I am a theist, or whatever it would be, or even I am angry, uh, as opposed to I am annoyed. Um, and Peirce saw at, at the very beginning of his, of his work uh, that the self was not a datum, but was the, an outcome of a, of a process of, of, of interpretation. And likewise the world. Now this led Peirce to, 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 to reflect uh, consequently upon the ground floor of how we access the world. And we access the world um, uh, at the ground floor obviously through our bodies and through, the pers and through our bodies as the locus, uh, as the place of a number of perceptual systems. Uh, so Peirce's first task was to actually show that perception itself was interpretation. Uh, and uh, funnily enough, uh, when uh, James, uh, William James, that is, wrote, uh, published his um, Principles of Psychology, James, uh, or Peirce, wrote a very, very interesting review of this, um, of this massive classic work uh, in, in American psychology and philosophy. And what did he focus upon? Upon perception as a form of abduction, that is, as a form of, of creative inference by which uh, holes or novelties are introduced into experience. That uh, the world uh, uh, that appears to us, appears to us first and foremost as the result of a process of hypothesis formation. So Peirce, in a certain sense, tried to push a meaning down uh, to the ground level, and not, in a certain sense, to, to, to impose meaning Upon, uh, uh, upon the ground level by making experience merely an artifact. And he tried to sort of straddle the fence between uh, uh, experience as constructed or as construed and um, uh, experience as, as uh, a self-evolving autonomous structure uh, that where the structures were to were really there. And in Peirce, uh, this semiotic realism, this notion of a, of a real world that can still only be accessed through forms of interpretation is present already in the, in the perceptual world. So by, by being able to do this, Peirce was then able uh, to, to unfold in a number of different areas then the, the ways in which abduction would, uh, and, and the other forms of inference would, would operate, and then would be able to show uh, that the same structures dealing with, the, um, uh, with perception uh, were present in later forms of constructed sign systems. And he, he was able ultimately to show that perception not only is a matter of embodied perception, what I could call sort of endosomatic perception, but there's also uh, exosomatic perception in the sense that when Peirce later uh, embedded his theory of perception in his full-fledged theory of signs, uh, the various sign systems then carry uh, traces of the body 
uh, whether in terms of accessing quality or accessing a sense of resistance or, or of ultimately synthesizing the world through logical habits. So the perceptual strand, which is originally there uh, in Peirce, uh, foregrounds the issue of embodiment, foregrounds the embodied nature of the self, and foregrounds the uh, primacy of interpretation. And the fact is, all of those issues uh, stay with Peirce to the bitter end. And as a matter of fact, Vincent Colapietro and his book on Peirce's theory of the self shows very clearly uh, the continuity of these strands, although it's shown in a number of other uh, different uh, different work.